You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Are you paying too much to trade options? If you're not trading on public.com, the answer is yes. Public is the only platform where you can earn a rebate on every option contract traded. And that's in addition to no commissions or per contract fees. There's no one else out there paying trading rebates, so you won't find a better deal. Bottom line, if you're paying more than $0 to place an options trade, then you're paying too much. Switch to public and start getting rebates on every single contract traded only at public.com. And now it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's going on in the world of volatility? Well, let's find out together, shall we? It is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name, of course, is Mark Longo from the THE OptionsInsider.com. I want to thank all of you out there who've been binging the latest edition to our network, of course, the Futures Rundown. VIX Futures sneak in there on occasion, so we do have some volatility overlap there. So again, we speak to that Volviews audience who are just subscribed to Volviews. Hey, we love you. Man, you're missing out on a whole bunch of other gold. I mean, this new future show, I'm really just crushing it out there. Folks are loving it, so I'm glad to see so many people having a good time with it. It's on me. I should have launched it earlier, I suppose. But hey, better late than never out there. Check it out. Make sure wherever you're listening to Volviews, you should upgrade to the full network. It's easy to do. Just look for Options Insider Radio Network. Wherever you're listening to Volviews right now, it should be there. In fact, I guarantee you it is. And then, of course, you want to go above and beyond. Check out the pro, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. It's going to get you a couple of additional shows, great pro Q&As. Had one with our friends over there at IB talking about a lot of vol this week with those folks, as well as, of course, uh, Options Oddities, which comes up after vol views every week out here. Great giveaways and a whole bunch more. You also may have heard a little bit of a, a new voice, a new name in the intro. Our friends at Public, they've been on the network for a while they're stepping into the big leagues now on Volviews. I even told them, I said, you know, the Volviews audience, a different bunch, a hardcore bunch. You know, if you're coming for the Volviews audience, you best bring your A game. They are very knowledgeable and very demanding. They expect a lot from their platforms. They said they are ready to kick the tires and light the fire. They are ready for you, the Volviews audience. So, hey, test them out, listeners. Put their word to the test, public.com. Easy, slash VV. Head on over there. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a great way to show them you're coming from Volatility Views. Great way to support the show that's been coming to you for well over a decade now. And hey, kick the tires and light the fires. They're a new entrant to the vol, excuse me, to the options game and a new entrant to the vol game, quite frankly. But they say they're ready for you big dogs out there in vol view. So test them out. Check out the rebate. Public.com slash VV, the place to go. Let them know you're coming from Volatility 
views and sling some vol contracts while you're there. Maybe get a rebate to do it. Not the worst thing at all. And speaking of not the worst thing, he's definitely not the worst thing when he joins us here on Volatility Views. He is the once future and present Dr. Vix, who these days is doing a hell of a lot of V-Stocks. Have you seen the schedule for that V-Stocks day? It's all Dr. Vix day. So he's a busy fellow, a.k.a. Mr. Russell Rhodes, who when he's not talking to us and when he's not crunching the numbers for V-Stocks, he is corrupting future minds over there at the Kelly School of Business. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the show, sir. As always, thrilled to be here and, uh, you know, just to, to continue on the ringing endorsement of the futures program. Uh, I've got three teams in the CME futures trading contest right now and uh, TWIFO and the futures program. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the exact the the, the specific name of the futures program. Um, both of those are required listening for my students. In fact, there's going to be a quiz on Monday. They have to listen this weekend. I love it. Both you and Rich Excel quizzing your kids, requiring them to listen to the show. That's how we get new listeners. We force them exactly. under pain of failure right. to listen to the network. So I appreciate that, sir. I've been hearing from a lot of students. They're getting a lot out of it, which is very they gratifying. Are. Are. If we can help corrupt young minds for future generations, we are happy to do so as we keep on rolling into a little bit of the old volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's commence operations here in the volatility review. Let's break down the week that was and indeed still is mobile trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity. All sorts of fun perspectives out there. And uh, kicking off the Friday session here, bringing to a close our trading week. We got much more. We got green on the screen here, listeners. Uh, the market's feeling their oats, even if they are a wee bit off their highs uh, we did punch through the 5,800 level in the S&P. Now it looks like we're threatening it again, heading back down the other direction. We'll see. We'll see if we stay above it. You know, these markets these days, listeners, if you don't like what you're seeing, just wait five minutes. Right now, as we're kicking off the show, S&P up almost a half a percent. Uh, Dow really feeling its oats up two-thirds of a percent, over almost 300 handles in the Dow land. So feeling their oats indeed. And NASDAQ up about a quarter of a percent, even though all of them are pretty much off their highs right now. Everyone's excited by the cyber taxi of Tesla. <laughs> That's what's driving all this upside out there, listeners. Uh, VIX Cash hanging out right now at about a 20 and a half. That puts it up exactly one and a half points from where it was this time last week. And if you're mystified by all this kind of persistent upside in VIX right now, we'll, we'll get to all that fun in a second. Uh, VVIX right now, still looking frothy at a 116, up about four points. And I've it, said it before, I don't want to beat the dead horse, but in the before times, in the pre-pandemic times, when we started getting up to this level, 116, threatening 120, certainly up to 125, that was seen by a lot of people as kind of the upper band there for vol of vol. And certainly we could blow through it on occasion, get up to 135, maybe even 150 or if things were going crazy. But outside of those very rare barren scenarios, usually when you hit 125, that was usually your apex for vol of vol. Then you start trending back down the other way. When you got down to 75, but that was usually the floor and you kind of rebounded from there and you usually vacillated within that range. And that was kind of the normal trading life of VBIX. These days, of course, post-pandemic, all bets are off. We spent a heck of a lot of time north of triple digits out there. So things are very different now, but just something to bear in mind, we are starting to flirt with what used to be the upper band of vol of vol. Uh, but that said, Mr. Rhodes, sir, a lot to unpack. Yet another whipsaw week here. So who knows where we'll be even by the end of the show. But what's been catching your eye in the vol market these days, sir? Uh, you know, it, it most definitely, and like you said, the 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 artificial boost that I think VIX was getting this week. We'll talk about that shortly. Uh, but you know, VIX is probably at a higher level than it should be right now. Um, you know, we haven't gotten a whole lot of volatility in the overall markets. Uh, it's probably 
you know, I, I don't know if it's a little too early to to be uh, loading up on any sort of hedge against what might happen in the election. And after next Wednesday, that those sorts of trades won't show up anymore anyway uh, within VIX. So it'll be interesting to see how VIX behaves going into the election. Um, I just can't imagine, you know, we we've had excess volatility, uh, you know, and intranight after the 2016 election and then leading up to the 2020 election, I just can't imagine that we're not going to see another repeat where uh, once we get all the election goofiness behind us, um, you know, they may not like the market might not like who won, uh, might be worried about whoever what they may do. But I have a funny feeling that uh, because we'll have at least uh, the uncertainty behind us as far as having a uh, successful transfer of power from Biden to Kamala or Biden to Trump, um, you know, I do feel like that that there's a, that the excess VIX and the excess VVIX really are a function of fear with respect to selling options. You just don't you, you just don't want to be short volatility right now. And without enough sellers, the buyers, uh, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of buying power to push things up. In fact, I felt like that when I looked at the volumes a little bit earlier today, they're really light. And I think that's something that came up last week as well. It is uh, the ADV in yep. VIX land taking a hit. We'll get to all that fun in a second. Our chat's having fun right now. They're enjoying Option God says, we are corrupting the kids. They're enjoying. Yes, we are. They're enjoying corrupting the young of the future, Mr. Rose. So that is our mission here on Vol Views, <laughs> corrupting the youth of the future. I buried the lead at the top there. I forgot to mention our, our pals in small caps land. I always neglect to sneak them in. So if six-tenths of a percent not doing it for you in the Dow, you know, close to half a percent in the S&P, quarter of a percent in the NASDAQ. How about 1.6% in small caps? They are certainly feeling their oats out there in small caps land today. So there's a lot of green to be found out there. Again, will it persist? That is the big question of the day. Speaking of questions, Mr. Mr. Rhodes, one of the questions we're getting a lot right now, we kind of just alluded to it, is, you know, what the hell's up with VIX Cash right now? We've seen naught but green pretty much on the screen. It's a little bit of whipsaw action, but mostly trending to the green for the better part of the last few weeks. And yet Vol has remained stubbornly persistent to the upside. I say that who's a guy who's got a few VIX puts in my back pocket. Uh, they're certainly not loving all this, all this, all this upside we're seeing out here in VIX cash. A lot of people are writing in with this same sentiment. What's going on? Why is VIX kind of stubbornly persistent above the 20 handle? You kind of just alluded to it. It looks like the election is gumming up the works. And I say it all the time. The devil is truly in the details when it comes to these vol products. And it seems like that is what's coming to pass right now. Why don't you break it down for our listeners, sir? Absolutely. So what I, I, I put up a sub stack in, in a lot of, of, what I end up digging into with respect to VIX comes from our Friday discussions. It's like we're teeing it up for what I do over the weekend. And we were we were questioning VIX. And, and so I, I just took a look at um, what options are being, are, are what series are being used in the VIX uh, calculation. This time last week, it was the October, or no, the, no the number 1st and the November 8th. Uh, those that's the Friday before and the Friday after the 30 day time frame. Uh, now it's the November 8th and the November 15th and the November 8th are the Friday, the options that expire the Friday after the election. And on Monday, I took a look at this just to try to get an apples to apples comparison between uh, November 8th, uh, November 1st and November 15th. Uh, I took a look at the at the money implied volatility and the November 8th options, the implied volatility was, I think, about two points higher than the at the money implied volatility for the November 1st. And then you went out to November 15th and the November 15th had implied volatility about 50 cents lower. It wasn't it wasn't as significant of a difference, but it was starting to tail off a little bit. Uh, in fact, right now. Um, in an interesting twist, uh, the November 15th are basically priced about the same as the November 8th, um, which was not the case when I first took a look at all of this. But um, they're only about 20 cents lower or 20 ball point or 0.2 ball points lower uh, for the uh, November 15th at the money straddle versus the, versus the November 8th. But the big point here is two 
S&P 500 index option series feed into the VIX calculation. And SIBO made the decision several years ago, which I think I still think was a pretty good decision, uh, to start using the Fridays that expired just before and just after the 30-day time frame to give you a, a little bit truer 30-day outlook. The issue with that one is the the that no option series spends more than 10 days in the VIX calculation. Uh, and we're coming to the end of uh, the 10 trading days where the first Friday after the election it would be feeding into the calculation. You go out to, again, what will become the first Friday as of next, win uh, next Wednesday, which will be the 15th, they're 0.2 vol points lower. And then if you go out to uh, the 22nd, uh, they're basically in line as well. Uh, so the at the money implied balls holding up uh, at a little bit lower level than where it asked for the options that expire right after the election. So um, there, the S&P 500 index options are still braced for something and maybe braced for something lasting throughout November. You know, it, there's always been all kinds of weird uncertainty around the election. Uh, personally, I think, I think they're going to resolve this thing and we'll know who won within a week or so after the election. I don't think it's going to be stretched out like it has in the past. Um, and if that happens, you'll definitely, it, reg again, regardless of who wins, uh, you'll probably start to see VIX, uh, VIX work its way back into the tween teens, not necessarily the tweens. That is indeed the subject of our question of the week. What will VIX be after the election? We'll get to that in a second. Hopefully we don't have a repeat of all sorts of Sturm and Drong after the election and torches and pitchforks and storming the Capitol, all that nonsense out there. If the devil is in the details with these products, I was talking to our buddy, the Flowmaster yesterday on the option block, and he said he was talking to some people internally over there about this as well. And you know, he did bring up the point, as I'm sure some of our listeners are thinking of right now as well, that you know, we do have daily options now. Why don't we start incorporating those into the calculations? And he said their their quant team is investigating that. So this might be the last cycle where we have this kind of aberration because we have to leap ahead a little bit with the options, maybe if they start using some more nearer dated, closer to the fire type contracts in that calculation. Maybe that will smooth this out a little bit. Maybe not, but it's an, an interesting thing. And again, just goes back to my point. I, I beat on all the time on this show. The devil is truly in the details when you're trading all of these ball products, even the big dogs like VIX. It's not just the Franken products out there, listeners. All right, let's keep on rolling out there to the land of the VIX futures. And we're looking at kind of a mixed bag to settle into the end of the week. Across the board, the uh, term structure has settled down a wee bit, but not much. I mean, I said last week you couldn't really find a 20 handle except for the near-dated contract, except for the October future, which again is kind of a, an interesting scenario out there. Uh, these days, that is still the case. We've got October juice to high heaven, as it has been pretty much all year. That's kind of been the deal hanging out at about a 21 when we kicked off the show. That puts it up, actually 21 exactly, puts it up about a third of a point from where it was this time last week. Meanwhile, we've got November coming in at about 1935, down about a tenth of a point. So a little bit of flux there in the front portion of the curb, and the rest of the curb kind of just gently drifting down this week. In fact, you go all the way out to June of next year, listeners, where hopefully all this election noise is well and truly behind us. And we're shy of a 19 half, even out there, 1942. So, uh, Mr. Rhodes, anything catching your eye out there in the ball surface this week, sir? Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the first person that'll raise their hand and said, uh, I, I've been wrong. But um, October, like about a buck 60 premium to, uh, uh, to, to November, I, I really expected that to narrow a bit as we approached expiration. So, um, yeah, it's at a, it's right at a, uh, it's a, it's, it's a buck 70 now. It's a buck 60 yesterday when I was looking at it. Uh, so the fact that that, you know, is, is, is widened out as much as it has, um, I really expected it, things to just start to come in line, uh, with this anticipation that, uh, if you were using the October futures for an October surprise, which we haven't quite seen yet with respect to the election, that maybe you would start to roll that out to November, uh, just not seeing that happen quite yet. Uh, and then uh, we, 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 we usually this time of year, we're talking about November versus December and, and the December did it 
is what I always like to call it. Um, the December divot is only 30 cents relative to January and 45 cents relative to November, which makes me wonder if, um, I, I assume maybe those are holding up as well in, in case we get, again, a long protracted uh, argument on who actually won this fight. So um, that, that, that we're not seeing quite the divot we're used to seeing. It's, it's not so obvious that people are asking about it. Yeah, you know, uh, well, yeah. now that we're so close, it is the front contract. It kind of almost blends into yeah. some of the noise out there. People were certainly asking about it back in January. That's where it really stands out, right? The beginning of the year, everyone's yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. What the hell's going on in October? I recall that was the, all the rage in January of 2020. What the hell's going on in October? Then a month and change later, something else really stole all the headlines, Mr. Dr. Bix, and we kind of Is forgot it? about that. But, yeah, if, if you go back to those shows – from let's say January 2020 listeners, we had, you know, Matt Fomore asked a bunch of other, pe other people who were coming on there in January and saying, this October is crazy overpriced. We need to sell the hell out of that by the other months. Then, of course, February came along and said, hold my beer. And uh, we all quickly <laughs> forgot about the October, October bump. Speaking of which, let's go out to the producers. Let's go out. Let's have a fun little flash pull out right now. Let's do it for the rest of the show. Maybe let's go a couple hours, get an hour past the show so folks have a chance to play. Do you think we'll see an October surprise that impacts the election? Yes or no? That's kind of been the one thing people have been clinging to out here in VIX and using to justify these somewhat elevated levels we're seeing of VIX right now is, hey, we haven't seen the October surprise yet. And that's, I mean, it's almost ever since Reagan kind of made it a surprise, people have come to expect it. I was thinking about it, and Mr. Rhodes... I was talking about this actually with the folks from IB earlier this week on our pro Q&A. To my mind, we didn't really have a big one in 2020. The last one I can recall really dramatically, some might say changing the course of the election was, of course, the Hillary email scandal a week and change before the 2016 election. Can you recall anything of similar seismic impact on 2020, sir? I felt like they tried and it didn't work, and it was the uh, the it, the Biden laptop. I, I really feel like they did try one, but it did, and that's why nobody remembers it. The press did a really good job on that. Um, so, they, but, uh, and I, I felt like like it seemed like on October first, uh, something came out about Trump and something came out about Kamala that that nobody paid a whole lot of attention to. Uh, I can't even remember what the news headlines are right now, but I felt I, I part of me felt like that was both of them trying to get ahead of the other one on saying something crappy about the other person, uh, and and it didn't gain any traction. I don't really think there. I I just can't imagine there's anything that people don't know about uh, Donald Trump or Kamala Harris that would be shocking to them. Um, you know, Harris has her baggage. Trump definitely has his baggage. And anybody that's supporting them seems to be looking well beyond all of that and and just on board with their guy or girl. And I don't feel like they, I, I really feel like anybody that's already made up their mind who they're who they're going to vote for. Uh, it, it It's I don't care how many millions of dollars you spend on goofy attack ads. It's not going to help at this point. I feel like a lot of people already have their. You know, that's what Steve from IB brought up on Tuesday. So people know these people already, but you know, who had more decades of baggage than Hillary back in 2016? And I think that that came back and really cut her off at the knees there. So I don't know if that argument really stands because she had a longer track record than either of these two. And it really kind of uh, undercut her. So maybe if it comes in and it reinforces some sort of negative perception people have, like it seemed like it did with her, then that could really be impactful. But you're right. If it's, if everyone's expecting one, is it an October surprise anymore? If everyone's got to have their surprise up their sleeve, it's not really a surprise. It's kind of a known unknown at that point. But intriguing stuff. Our poll just went live. Get over there and vote right now, listeners. We'll check in on it as the show progresses. As we keep on rolling, it is time to progress beyond our shores, listeners, and explore what's going on in the international vol market. Yes, it is time for the International Volatility Review. It's time to explore what's happening in the volatility market beyond our shores. It's time for the International Volatility Review. The International Volatility Segment is brought to you by Eurex, home of Euro stocks, V stocks, DAX, 
and the German government bond-based Eurobund, Eurobobble, Euroshots Derivatives. Eurex is the leading European derivatives exchange. Learn more about trading B-Stocks futures and options, the European volatility benchmark at www.eurex.com slash bstocks. All right, let's get to the international fun listeners. And it is always fascinating to watch the differences and the nuances between these products. Again, we were just talking about the devils and the details with VIX. Same thing here with V-Stocks. While VIX is remaining stubbornly firm, V-Stocks giving up the ghost this week. Coming in to the close today, 18 and a half. Puts it down nearly two points, about one and three quarters points from where it was This time last week, I know there's a lot of VIX people out there who would love to see VIX at a level like this right now. And we are not for a variety of the reasons we just broke down earlier. Remember that range we've seen for the year, the high go figure, August 5th, 31.16, the low last December. But we also flirted with it back in March of 1212. So obviously a little over six, close to six and a half points above that 52-week low right now. Remember, if you want to check this stuff out for yourselves, eurex.com, E-U-R-E-X.com, the place to go, or just go to stocks.com. That'll get you straight to VStock. That's S-T-O-X-X.com. If you are so inclined, listen, that'll give you all this data we're talking about right now and a whole bunch more. Mr. Rhodes, sir, when you're not talking to me, you're crunching a whole heck of a lot of VStock's data. What's catching your eye in the world of international vol these days, sir? I do want to point out that, and and I'm I, I must I must spend more time looking at, like you said, the details. I am the devil of the details for volatility. I kind of like that better than I want to be the devil of the details from here on out. <laughs> the devil of the de- or Doctor Devil, not in the details. Yeah, I, the devil of the details. I'm detail. kind of liking that. All right. So, but um, but so in the detail with these stocks, they don't use wick. They don't use weeklies. They use the standard third Friday options. So what you're starting to see to create what you're seeing now in um, these stocks is you're seeing the um, the November and December options are what's feeding into the B stocks calculation. And because or you're getting ready to see December takeover. Sorry, we've still got a little bit of October. I think we still have a little bit of October left um, up until next uh Next week, and then and then it will start to be all November and December. But regardless of the ex- exact days, et cetera, the fact that we've got longer dated options that are probably reflecting less of a chance that we've still got election related volatility in that index, and that would explain the lower level right there. Goodness, I really wish I had thought of that about three weeks ago and traded B stocks versus VIX. Uh, remind me in four years, and we'll get on that one. Uh, also, something else with respect to V-Stocks versus VIX, uh, the October-November relationship had been very similar for months, and now uh, it's widened back out. I mean, we got down to a 20-cent spread of October over November uh, until the past couple of weeks, and now it's widened back up to uh, you know, well over a buck fifty, and a buck fifty was kind of the level where I like to look at maybe shorting October and going long November. I'm not doing that because we're so close to October expiration, uh, but it's only a fifteen cent premium over in Europe, and this gets even better. The December divot in V stocks is a dollar thirty five. When you look at November versus December, Ooh. and a dollar when you look at January versus December. Ooh. So the December contracts, or even like a November, December, January fly in V stocks versus a fly in VIX might make an awful lot of sense right now. Where you're long the where you're long December for in V stocks and you're short December in um in VIX. Yeah, I don't hate that at all. You know, that'd be a really interesting. I'm, I'm looking at like five numbers at once now and trying to talk <laughs> at the same time. Uh, you know, I'm trying to do all the math right now, and that's not going to work. Um, but, but I mean, that that actually, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't hate that. You know, we love yeah. the seasonality yeah. of the vol products. We always talk about the lows in VIX. We just said the 52 week low for V stocks is in December. It looks like they're pricing in an even more aggressive trough. 
And the fact that you're right, it's so immediate. It's so obviously seasonal because November is priced above it. January is priced above it. I got a feeling there's a thing or two you could do with that listener. Speaking of doing things out there in V-Stocks, I know you were digging last week into those downside puts or maybe we thought maybe it was a ratio spread. Do you have any more insight on that, sir? Gosh, yeah, and I'm trying to pull up the article right now because I I spent – I spent almost all of Friday night going through uh, this V stock, the V stock stuff that we were talking about. So last week we we picked up on a big V stocks trade, uh, and it was uh, what were they doing? Were they buying twenty four thousand of the V stocks, fifteen puts, and selling twelve thousand of the December seventeen puts? That's what we thought uh, it and, was. Yeah. yeah, that was an exit, and they did it at a credit for thirty eight cents. Uh, they got into it. Uh, they got they get it. Got into it uh, basically at a credit as well. Uh, oh. <laughs> so they did extremely well on these trades. And nice to get paid to get in and get out. That's nice. Yeah, I I I I went back through um, the tape on both of those options, and it looks like a ninety eight thousand by forty nine thousand uh, two by one. Uh, was put on over six different trading sessions over about a two week period. And the net result there was it it was it ended up being a, they they did put some they put one lot on at a credit, but the red of rest of them were in a debit. So they paid twelve cents for them. and they've done two exit trades so far. The one that we picked up on on September thirtieth, where they got a credit of thirty eight cents after paying twelve cents for it, and then they they got out of three thousand of the fifteen puts and fifteen hundred of the seventeen puts, uh, and they took in a forty cent credit when they did that. It looks like there might have been one more small trade this week that that was exiting. I'm not one hundred percent sure uh, what the situation was there, but the original positions down to seventy one thousand by thirty five thousand five hundred. And they've got a uh, they realized a profit of 50 cents per spread um, on on, you know, part of it so far, which is just really, really nice. Um, I'm just watching for them to trade out of the rest of it. Now, this is a December trade and uh, not 100 percent sure you know, why they were looking out to December for it. Uh, we're going to mention that Eurex, ha Eurex has an event coming up. Uh, and I've been doing all the prep calls for that Eurex event that's uh, in a couple of weeks, and a lot of discussion around this trade, and because um, uh, it's not why. something that they've seen before, but it looks like it's working out particularly well. Um, so there. Yeah, I, we see one by twos to the upside in VIX all the time. I could count on probably one hand the number of times I've seen size put one by twos. So that in and of itself makes it interesting. The fact that yeah. they got a credit to get in at least for some of it. And a credit to get out is doubly intriguing out there. That's the way to do it. Paid to get in and paid to get out, listeners. There are worse things than that. So, yeah, they went out to December. That was kind of one of the things that made me surprised that they were closing now. But, hey, sometimes you got to get while the getting is good, Mr. Rhodes. And uh, they clearly yeah, think the yeah. getting is good right now, listeners. Have you been following along with this paper out here in B-Stocks? It, it certainly is fascinating stuff. If you want more fascinating stuff, stay tuned in a little bit when we break down Russell Day, a.k.a. the Euro Trading European Volatility Markets, the upcoming session about daily options and VSOCs coming up at Eurex. You can check it out for yourselves in a little bit as we check out what's going on right now in the mothership out there in VIX options. Is it a banger day out there in VIX land, listeners? The answer, eh, kind of no. <laughs> kind of light. Even though it has ticked up. Just as we've been talking, coming in to start of the show, it was barely over 200,000. Now we're up to 374. So something is hitting on the tape right now that's starting to make things a little bit more respectable. Uh, the ADV 827. So we're not even halfway to this ADV, which in and of itself has been kind of cut off at the knees. That's down 60,000 contracts on this time a week ago. So VIX options not managing to maintain that. And I've said it before. Once it starts threatening a million contracts a day, that's really not sustainable for VIX over the long term unless things are really rocking and rolling. And we are obviously not right now at least rocking and rolling to that degree. So you knew that ADB was going to come in, and that's pretty much the case. Still 827, a very respectable. A lot of names out there would kill for that, but uh, VIX land taking a little bit off the top. And for all of you out there who have been waiting the entire show to say, just get to it, just get to the top 10. We shall do that right now. You've been waiting for your top 10 indicator breakdown. How are we looking? 
top 10 size positions and VIX options right now. We've been 50-50 for a while, listeners. And you know if you've been listening to the show for a while, that's kind of an aberrant scenario. Usually doesn't hang out that long, but not this week. It's hanging out again this week. We are still 50-50 right now. Calls over puts in the top 10. Read into that what you will, listeners. Cost you 215,000 contracts to break into the top 10 this week. That gets you to the OC 29s. Wow. Good luck with those bad boys. Number nine, 230,000 of the OC 17 puts. I hope those come to pass. That means I'll be a happy camper. Number eight, 232,000 of my old pal, my favorite position on the board. They have usurped the former 47 halves that I used to love. It's the Nove doubles, 232,000 of those bad boys. Number seven, 247,000 of the OC 20s. Those are looking certainly intriguing right now. Number six, 267,000 of the OC 45s. Again, probably no bueno, but those have also been on the other sides of ratios and verticals as well. This kind of funky upside in October. Uh, Number five, 284,000 of the OC 15 puts. That certainly seems like a bridge too far, especially given what we've been saying lately with the devil and the details of the VIX calculation. 15, I wouldn't be angry at it, but I don't think we're going to see it. Number four, 296,000 of the OC 19 puts. Those certainly have a chance. We're seeing Vol come in a little bit as we're coming into the end of the show. So OC 19 puts have a chance. Number three, 301,000 of the Nov 35. So right back to the Nov upside, listeners. Number two, only a madman would trade these 310,000 of the OC 18 puts. And then the number one size position out here in VIX options, listeners, is perhaps yet another bridge too far. 319,000 of the OC 16 puts. What do you think? You think we can get there by October expiration? You know, the train is coming. Not a lot of time left. But you know what there is time for, listeners? It's Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. All right, everybody. It is time to unleash the man who calls himself now the devil in the VIX details. Yes, Mr. Dr. VIX. What devils did you spot this week, sir? But also, I, there are a couple other things I think we want to talk about with respect to the VIX complex. So I've only got a handful of trades. Yeah, it's always uh, a little bit quieter on the week before a um, before a standard expiration. We've got standard expiration. Uh, I did find a trade that I I, I can badmouth a bit, and one that I that I really like. So let's get going uh, on Wednesday uh, with VIX at twenty one twenty eight. Uh, well, I actually like being able to 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 quote VIX with a curvy number at the beginning. At VIX at, t- at 21.28, uh, somebody bought 1,500 of the October 23rd 28 calls for 71 cents. Uh, did that in a big old sweep. Uh, not real wild about that trade. Not really sure what we've got on the docket between now and October 23rd other than earnings. And earnings typically doesn't, doesn't have much of an impact on VIX. Um, so yeah, that that one's a so-so trade. Uh, here's where I'm getting upset uh, because it's a lack of logic. Uh-oh. Uh oh, Doctor yeah, Vic's getting yeah, angry. Well, I'm I'm getting ready to badmouth risk managers. I don't have to deal with them anymore. I don't have to suck up to them anymore. So uh, here we go. Uh, yesterday with Vix at thir- at twenty one twenty, somebody came in and sold hundred of the October thirtieth nineteen puts for sixty five cents, and then they bought, which I'm okay with. You know, VIX will probably hold up a bit going into the election, maybe. Um, I mean, I can understand the logic behind that. And then they went out and they bought 100 of the October 30th, 14 and a half puts for two cents to protect themselves. So it was 19 half, 14 half? Those are the strikes? So it was 19, 14 and a half, yeah. Oh. But it, it's, it's in, in my dislike here is all about the, I mean, I loved it when I was at SIBO because we got extra volume from it, but... We hadn't been below 14 and a half since mid October, mid August. And I, you know, I, 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 you know, there's no certainties in the financial market and I'll, I'll probably regret what I'm getting ready to say. I'm getting ready to make it happen. What do you think the chances of VIX going under 14 and a half between now and the end of the month are? If it does it, I hope it does it within the next few days. I would really enjoy that. I know. I know. But, uh, I know what you want. Outside but, of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he sold the 19 halves. 
19s for no they sold the 19s for 65 cents oh, okay 65 cents. And, okay i was gonna say but yeah. but they the, the part i don't like is they bought the 14 and a half puts for 20 cents yeah, you're not i my assumption is a risk manager made them do that you know what i do you see what i'm saying about yeah, it? i do it's, i do i i i understand buying the 16s or the 17s for protection um but that that's there are option trades and without getting way too much into the details, because I am the detail devil now, but there are option trades that firms put on sometimes for risk uh, that, but, that they really don't want to, either because they've got to worry about a stress test. We see a lot of out of the money SPX put buying that's all about making sure you pass the Fed mandated stress test, et cetera. Uh, so I just think this 14 and a half puts. It doesn't really, in my mind, it really doesn't change that much of the risk com risk com composition around. Yeah, the trade. it has it has the whiff of a tap yeah. you on the shoulder type trade. Just do it to make them happy, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, and and we t and we talk about when you know people buy 50, 60, 70 strike calls that it's the same thing, uh, but VIX VIX isn't going to zero. I I you know I ran it a long long time ago and I I just I we took all the options that were fit, feeding into the VIX calculation and we said they were a nickel by a dime and that made VIX about 5%. Yeah. So you got to think that's probably as low as VIX can get. It's 5 has been our kind of static VIX, yeah. Yeah, it was around a 5. Yeah. You know, and and that's impossible in its own right. But, you know, I understand. I, I would understand if they had sold the 19 calls and the risk manager made them buy the 40 calls. I, I actually <laughs> do understand that, but I don't understand. I, I disagree with it. Is it better? I understand why they're doing it, but I disagree with it. That risk management makes you very angry, sir. They do. They do. I don't like being tapped on the shoulder by a Big Ten, <laughs> a former Big Ten lineman that can do some math. <laughs> and then finally... Uh, that's that's what the risk managers on the floor. I was going to say, what kind of risk manager did you have? <laughs> oh man, I, I, in the euro dollar option pit, that's exactly the kind of risk manager that you had to get down there. My guys were all the opposite of those who couldn't be the D one linemen, but they were good at math, so they could be the risk managers. Yes, they could be the risk manager. So, and then today, I, I like this trade, and, and I, I think anybody that's ever listened to me talk about the markets will understand why. Uh, VIX was at when VIX was at twenty sixty five a bit earlier today. Uh, somebody came in and bought two hundred of the October twenty third forty puts. And they paid eighteen sixty five for those. I know that's kind of an expensive option, but your break even on it is twenty one thirty five. Interesting. Which is above, yeah, which is above where the market's trading. I mean, I I, I could easily see uh, maybe VIX drifting, especially with some of the, you know, the artificial boost that we've been talking about. I could easily see VIX below twenty without any sort of market event. Um, come October 23rd settlement. So I'll keep an eye on, on that one and see if they hold it to settlement and report back here. That's another one we don't see a ton of deep in the money puts going up in VIX. So that's an interesting choice. Oh, you don't. You don't. And and you got to figure that that that's probably someone who ha does not have access to a futures account, uh, but, do but does have a securities account where they can trade VIX options, but they can't trade VIX futures. Yeah, which is a which is a segue, and I promise I'll be very quick about this. You know what I'm getting ready to talk about? Yeah, dive in, sir. Sibo's got. I just know where we are time wise. Sibo uh, uh, is going to launch, and they're not calling them this, but this is what they are. They are launching daily options on that settle into a VIX future position on Monday, and they had a call about it this morning. Um, the the. They, they're, they're not calling them daily options, which I thought was kind of funny. No, they I mean, haven't I, hit on that would, in the branding you at think all. You'd yeah. be all over that. Yes, yes. Um, but they do settle into, so if you hold them to expiration, and I think one of the reasons that like SPX, NDX, and RUT options and Eurostock 50 options are so popular uh, around, you know, around short, short-term trading with daily options available is you put the trade on. Uh, you go to the gym, you goof off, you look where the market closed, and you had your cash settlement. I, I, I'm, I, if I were still at SIBO and I was involved in this process, I, I, I would have really encouraged cash settlement versus ca settlement into the futures. I don't know if the CFTC would let them do that, but I, I'm sure there's regulatory reasons. There's always reasons that we don't know about behind uh, products being launched, but they're going to have, you know, you're, you're going to be able to buy a call or buy a put that will settle into a longer short position in a monthly VIX future. They're only based on the monthly VIX futures so not based on the weekly VIX futures, uh, starting on Monday, 
which I don't know if we're going to be able, if we're going to include that in our weekly rundown or are we going to, you know, the dandy dailies and then the weekly rundown, who knows? Um, well, who knows, who knows if they're going to trade, you know, <laughs> if they make you really angry, we can include them. Yeah. If they make me really angry, we'll include them. So, um, you know, they're going to launch these things. We'll definitely have a lot more to say about them next week. I, uh, you know, I'm going to SIBO's risk management conference, uh, kicks off, Tuesday with some private meetings and then Wednesday with social stuff and Thursday with a lot of um, a lot, a jam packed full day of caffeining yourself up and listen to people talk about derivatives and volatility. Um, but I, I'll come back with a lot more insight onto those contracts next week. Yeah. If you can well. make, if you can make it off your plane yeah. in time, sir, we'll love to hear the, the live um, update from RMC, sir. So that'll be, and you're right. They and, haven't um, been hitting on the, I was just talking about these with the flow master yesterday and they haven't really been hitting on, they've been talking about the futures aspect, but not the daily aspect. So you're right. That's a bit of a interesting choice out there. Speaking of daily VIX options activity, that leads right into what we're talking about right now, listeners, which is, it was it lighting it up out there in VIX options this week? Well, I think you could reasonably intuit from the ADV coming in that the answer is no, but you might be surprised. We had a couple of bangers out here this week. Uh, not today. Like we said, today, 374,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog today, 22,000 of the OC 21 puts. As we're kind of coming up against it, I'm going to kind of run through. That's the biggest one of today. So let's just jump to yesterday because much spicier meatball. Excuse me, yesterday, listeners. 1.09 million contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog yesterday, 65,000 of the Jan 17 puts against 65,000 of the Ock 30s. Funky one. Now, of those two, the Jan was opening. So intriguing because everyone's going to roll their Ock 30s to the Jan 17 puts. That's just what you do, listeners. Number three, 51,000 of the Ock 28s. Good luck to them. Number four, 48,000. Those are probably closing as well. Number four, 48,000 of the Dece 16 puts. And number five, 43,000 of the OC doubles. Looks like a lot of closing there, except for the Jans. Uh, Wednesday, 773,000. So another decently active day, but not at the ADB. The big dog, 49,000 of the OC 19 puts. Number two, 36,000 of the OC 18s. Again, what madman would trade those things? Number three, 32,000 of the OC 25s. Number four, 30,000 of the OC 21s. And number five, 30,000 as well of the Nob 15, one five puts. Interesting time to be looking at the seasonality of VIX. You know, we talked about DEES looking good in that time frame, maybe a 15 handle. No, I don't know. Interesting. Depends how much post-election kerfuffle we have going on. Tuesday, 668,000 on the tape. So a lighter day. 33,000 was the big dog. That was the OC 25s, followed by number two, 32,000 of the DEES 15 puts. Number three, 27,000 of the NO 15 puts. We talked about this one a little bit yesterday on the option block as well. Number four, 22,000 of the OC 45s. And number five, 20,000 exactly of the March 60s. Again, the only clearly opening trade on the board yesterday, March 6-0s. I have to assume there was something else probably against that, maybe a ratio or something that didn't make it into our top five. Uh, Monday, the banger day of the week, 1.4 million. So we came out of the gate hot on Monday, listeners. The big dog, 141,000 of the Nov 25s, followed by number two, 139,000 of the Oct 25s. Right, we talked about this on the odd option block on Monday. This was what looked like a roll, no Oct Nov 25, but they also had other legs against it, 117,000 of the Oct 45s and 116,000 of the Nov 45s. So looks like they were taking their Oct vertical and rolling it to uh, November. But then again, there's so much size OI on these strikes that we ha it's hard to penetrate sometimes. And then number five, 78,000 of my favorite strike on the board, the Nov doubles. Uh, let's keep going out to the devil in the detail doctor's <laughs> favorite. That's going to be hard. That's a mouthful to say. Uh, favorite product. It's, of course, SVIX. A 2435, down about a two-thirds of a point this week and Kind of unched since the start of the show, so we're kind of just treading water out here as we're already kind of coming up against it. We've been having a lot of fun on the show today, listeners. Hope you've been having a lot of fun as well. Uh, 2,600 contracts on the tape. So the narrative that nobody wants to trade SVIX options continues. Uh, the ADV is 6,000 now. That's down another 500. At this point, we're going to be down to 50 contracts ADV a day. I mean, it keeps giving up hundreds to thousands of contracts in ADV every week. This is not sustainable. It was just nearly 20,000 about a month and change ago. So people just don't want to trade SVIX options for whatever. It's not like it's not moving. Well, today it's not, but it has been moving. Uh, the big dog out there, such as it is 1,900 of the Jan 36s. So 
Read into that what you will. Uvix, five and a half, also weirdly unchanged. Uh, and it pretty much has been unchanged all show as well. Uh, Uvix, looking a little bit spicier out there today. 25,000 contracts on the tape. That's pretty close to its ADV of 30,000, which is also coming in about 3,000, so 10% on the week. Again, not a good trend, but Uvix still putting up more numbers at the end of the day than SVIX. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, I know your UVIX trade did all right over the week. We had some listeners write in. They're happy whenever they get a dime or so pop because that means you can live to fight another day in this. That's the whole name of the game. Live to fight every week until you get another one of those 10-handle jumps. Uh, but what's catching your eye out there in SVIX and UVIX this week, sir? Like you said, the UVIX trade, it's not so much. I know the, the timing of kind of coming up with that has been very, very fortunate. Um, but it really is. And, and I get. You know, I'll, I'll get I'll get people pinging me every once in a while about it on Monday morning. Uh, it really is not about uh, making money every week. It's really more about having something in place that we get. A, if we get a volatility event, uh, it's going to offset some of the suffering that you're going to experience everywhere elsewhere. And and you guys are very aware that I always that that I'm always holding a position in in SVIX. I think with the exception of a week or two since it's launched, I've been long at least a little bit of it. So it's a it's a great thing to match up with that position. I mean, I'm not matching it up one for one. Uh, it's typically about a quarter of it, but uh, that, yeah, I, I, it's just it's just kind of a fun thing that we figured out. Uh, hopefully, uh, it continues to stick with us. Yeah, you know, and and continues to uh, give us some opportunities. I I play around with it. I played around with using a moving stop to get out of it on Monday, and then tested that, and that didn't help either. But every week I try something a little bit different to try to improve on it, and so far no good. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, uh, the listeners are loving it. This is one they've kind of grokked onto. I know a lot of them, so yeah. it's easy to do at the end of the day, right? Anyone could buy some Uvix at the end of the day. Question is when, and then when do you get out of it, obviously? And what do you have mm -hmm. against it in the case of SVIX? I know you have a lot of SVIX. But an intriguing one any week where you can get it paying for itself so you can keep keep doing it week after week, always a good thing out there. As we keep on rolling out there, uh, UVXY, again, not a heck of a lot going on. 28.35, up about a third of a point on the week. So not a lot for UVXY. 40,000 contracts on the tape today. So UVXY kind of feeling that, ADV death we're seeing across the board in the ball space right now. The ADV is 71,000. That's down 8,000 from this time last week. So not a lot of people trading UVXY right now as well, which was kind of the end of the day, listeners, the argument all the UVXY defense force used to have when they come on the show and say, UVXY is better. Why? Because it's more liquid. Well, it's clearly doing more paper still. It's got a lot more ADV still than UVX, but eventually those two, those two paths will cross. And the question is, where are you hanging out, UVIX or UVXY? Right now, someone's hanging out in 19,000 of the Jan 25s in UVXY. So they're looking decent right now. Will that persist? We shall see. And then getting out to VXX, 5440 as we kicked off the show. and still pretty much hanging out right around there. Up about six-tenths of a point. So again, not a huge evolution across any of these products this week. 11,000 contracts on the tape. If that doesn't sound like a loss because it's not. Uh, the ADV is only 28,000. That's down another 2,000. So we're seeing just the slow decline of ADV. You know, we're seeing opposite seasonality this year in the vol space. All these products maxed out their volume in ADV back in the dog days of summer. And now they've had a slow, steady decline ever since. It's supposed to be the other way around. You die in August and then you come back to life in September or October. But we're kind of seeing the opposite of that right now, which is interesting. Top position in VXX. It's our old pal, the Jan, excuse me, the October 70s. My goodness, yeah, good luck on those. Uh, 8,800 of those bad boys open out there. I know Mr. Rhodes, he's a huge fan of UBXY and BXX, so we'll just keep on rolling right on into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into... The Crystal Ball. All right, everybody, let's get to the Crystal Ball. Before we get there, Mr. Rhodes, I neglected to check in on our flash poll. We have two polls right now. Uh, an actual question of the week in the flash poll. First off, our flash poll, we asked our audience, do you think we'll see an October surprise? And they're gearing for it, Mr. Rhodes. They're ready. They're hunkering down. Two thirds are saying yes right now. Only a third saying no. So they're expecting to get smacked in the face 
sometime between now and the election. So that's kind of interesting. I guess if passed his prologue, you know they're going to try, right? The question is whether it will have legs. And then getting back to what you were talking about before with some of the mechanics of Val and also whether Val's looking a little bit surprisingly spicy or even past the election right now. That's our question of the week right now. We said, hey, we're a month out from the election. A lot still has to unfold between now and November 5th. However, when the dust settles, where will VIX open on Wednesday, November 6th? We gave you four choices. Back down below 18, 38 point, or I'm not going to say, I almost gave away the answer. Back down below 18, or, or still higher, above 26, or a little bit higher, 22 to 26, or around here where we are right now, 18 to 22. Mr. Rhodes, what is your answer? Where do you think VIX will be the day after the election, the morning after the election? And then B, where do you think our audience is going? after the election. Morning after, yes. 17 and a half. Oh, so you are in the VIX against annihilated camp. Interesting. You know, well, you know, it's funny you say annihilated. Seven, I don't consider 17 and a half annihilated. No, in general, it's not. Yeah, from yeah. where we are right yeah. now, that, that's, that's taken a bit of a hit. And uh, you were just saying you thought the, the vol was looking a little bit firmer beyond the election than you thought. So interesting, interesting. Our audience is with you. 38.7% say back below 18. Uh, so that would fall certainly in the 17 and a half category. 19.4% uh, for number two saying it's going to be higher north of 26. Uh, 29% say it's going to be in that 22 to 26 range. And 12.9% say we're going to be banging around where we are right now. 18 to 22. Get out there right now, listeners. You've got about uh, a few hours left to make your voice heard. All right, it's crystal ball time, listeners. And let's see, as we're coming into the end of the show, uh, we're seeing the markets not that dissimilar from where we were to start the show. We're coming in easing a little bit. Oh, we've got the Dow. Well, the Dow is still running away with it, up eight-tenths of a percent. Actually, I take it back. S&P just ticked about half a percent. So that's about where it was to start the show. NASDAQ easing a bit, only up about a quarter of a percent right now. And VIX Cash easing a bit as well, down to about a, uh, it's like about a 20, 20, yeah, 2036 out there right now. So 2036, listeners. Uh, let's see. Last week we had myself. I was at a 1765, so no joy for me. Uh, Russell, oh, 2024, 0.12 away. Oh, Mr. Rhodes, I feel your pain. And then Vix, or Vix, Mark was at his palindromic nonsense, 1661. You know, if you waited two minutes, you would have a bullseye, Mr. Rhodes. So you're close. I know. I know. Damn. Damn, that sucks. Ugh. I've been there so many That's times, so I could, I could feel your pain. That one hurts. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you feeling for this time next week? If you want to throw a little V-Stocks in there as well, have at it, sir. Oh, B stocks, I think about 1810. And I think it'll continue to, to drift lower as we start to, to, to shift out to, to December on that one. And um, I, I think we're going to, I think we're going to creep a bit below 20. Uh, what did you say? I want to make sure I don't step on you. All right. Well, then I'm going to say um, 1967, my birth year. 1967, this time next week. Uh, let's think. Maybe we maybe we get that 14 handle come into play. You were just talking about, sir. I just no. I just re-racked VIX for you just in case. Still 2036. I'm sorry, sir. Not budging. I was trying to get you those last 0.02 to give you a bullseye. I'm trying. I'm working for you. But VIX I is not it. VIX is not playing ball. All right. What are we feeling this time next week, listeners? Yeah, it's it's a weird time. We talked about the mechanics of VIX cash out there. I'm gonna say. Hmm. I like Russell's level. It's not terrible, but I'm going to say I'm going I'm to be a little bit more favorable to the downside. I'm going to say 1865. I am spitting in the face of everything we're seeing out there in the vol market right now. Uh, 1865, so coming off uh, not quite two points out there. And then V stocks. I don't hate where you are, Mr. Rose. I'm going to give you a little bit of breathing room. I'm going to say 179. I'm going to say 1785. There we go. A little bit, a little bit south of the 18 hand. Get your predictions in for VIX and for V stocks, listeners. You hit one of them. Now you get two, you get two chances, two tilts at the windmill. You hit one of them, fabulous prizes can be yours, just like they were almost Russell's today. But alas, they were not. Uh, that music means we are done here for this week, listeners. Of course, if you want to learn more about all things volatility and what, what public has to bring to the table, only one place to go, public.com slash VV. Of course, that stands for Volatility Views. Easy, no-cost way to support the show. Head on over there, tell them. You heard about them, I should say, from Volatility Views. Just go into that URL, does that. Just tells them, hey, 
You heard about them from Volatility Views. Kick the tires and light the fires. Maybe you get a rebate or two in your back pocket. Not the worst thing. They also really want to hear your feedback on their platform. It is a new platform after all. And they want you folks, the cutting edge, the hardcores, the hardest of the hardcores on Vol Views. They really want your insight. So get on over there. Tell them what you like. Tell them maybe what you like to see them add. And guess what? Maybe they'll do it. In fact, they probably will. That's why they've been on our network for a while. They're loving to hear your feedback and your engagement. Public.com slash VV, the place to go to learn more. Mr. Rhodes, a little birdie has told me we have an upcoming Dr. V Stocks Palooza coming up over there with your ex. Remind us again, when is that and where can folks go to check it out? Sorry, Thursday the 24th. And I think the best way is to Google uh, Urex Focus Day 2024, and you can sign up there. Uh, we've got uh, we got a market maker from IMC, a strategist from JP Morgan, uh, somebody from Bank of America, and a couple of more buy side guys who, um, who have not 100% committed, but I think they're gonna be there. So we've got a lot of really, really smart folks that are going to be talking about uh, short dated index option trading and trading the derivatives associated with V stocks. And where do folks go if they want to access that and check it out? And maybe is that they have to register well, ahead of time? Yeah, you got to register ahead of time. And again, um, I I don't have a link on me, but uh, uh, if you if you go again if you Google your, whenever I have to check something about the event, I Google Urex and Focus Day 2024, and boom, it I, I, it takes me right there. So there you go. Do a little work. Use the Google. <laughs> there you go, listeners. Urex Focus Day. It's coming up on October 24th. So if a whole hour of Mr. Rhodes wasn't enough, you're going to get a whole day full of them here. Uh, the subtitle of this event is called Trading European Volatility Markets Daily Options and V Stocks. Mr. Rhodes is doing the opening. He's running all the panels, so he's doing his best impersonation of me being Mr host and moderator out there. I'm looking forward just to that. So if you want your taste a day full of Russell, one episode not enough for you, then by all means search Urex and Virtual Focus Day and you will get a whole heck of a lot of Russell in your hot little hands. And that is going to do it for us on the show today. Also going to do it for us on the network. For those of you on the pro, we already did an early kind of hurricane driven episode of Options Oddities. So that's already in your pro podcast feed. You can check it out whenever you have the time. And then, of course, back again on Monday. We are not off. So back again on Monday for the option block. Don't listen to the rumors. We'll be here talking all sorts of mess on the option block on Monday. All the way through to next Friday. Hopefully, we'll have Mr. Rhodes hot off the plane from RMC. Hopefully, there's no delays. and He'll be able to join us on the show, giving us a hot update there. So we'll see you next Friday, another episode. Of volatility views. Stay safe out there, everybody. The international volatility segment is brought to you by Eurex, home of Euro stocks, V stocks, DAX, and the German government bond based Eurobund, Eurobobble, Euro shots derivatives. Eurex is the leading European derivatives exchange. Learn more about trading V stocks futures and options, the European volatility benchmark at www.eurex.com slash V stocks. Are you paying too much to trade options? If you're not trading on public.com, the answer is yes. Public is the only platform where you can earn a rebate on every option contract traded. And that's in addition to no commissions or per contract fees. There's no one else out there paying trading rebates, so you won't find a better deal. Bottom line, if you're paying more than zero dollars to place an options trade, then you're paying too much. Switch to public and start getting rebates on every single contract traded. Only at public.com. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider.
Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. <laughs>